A former Workers' Party MP, Raisa Khan, found guilty of abusing her parliamentary privilege. And that's after she lied multiple times in Parliament about her sex assault case. The Committee of Privileges, or COP, is urging Parliament to give her a $35,000 fine. It's uh, also calling for public prosecutors to investigate WP leaders Pritam Singh and Faisal Manab over their conduct before the committee. As for how the duo and WP chair, Sylvia Sylvia Lim handled the saga. Well, the COP says uh, Parliament should wait till the criminal probe against Mr. Singh concludes. Well, the committee issued its recommendations after 66 hours of work, uh, which includes interviews with the parties involved. Now, it concluded that uh, opposition leader Pritam Singh told Ms. Khan to retain the narrative and to take it to the grave after she confessed to party leaders that she had lied in Parliament. Mr. Singh also said there would be no judgment if Ms. Khan were to continue lying. Uh, days later, Ms. Khan forwarded to the party leaders a request by the police to interview her. She thanked the leaders for guiding her without judgment, which suggests that they had advised her on the matter. Now, the committee said uh, this version of events is backed up by testimonies given by Ms. Khan and her associates, but WP leaders were not able to do so. It described an internal disciplinary panel uh, on the matter as self-serving. The Committee of Privileges says repeating a lie should have cost Ms. Raisa Khan a higher penalty, but it took into account mitigating circumstances when it recommended the fines. It says that the allegations Ms. Khan made against the police in Parliament in August were unsubstantiated and untrue in some parts. But it also found that she was not fully responsible when she lied to Parliament a second time in October. Tan Sehui reports. Guilty. That's the committee's finding on Ms. Reza Khan. The report does not dispute that she had spoken an untruth in Parliament on two separate occasions. When she first lied on 3rd of August and repeated it in a clarification the same day, the report says only she was aware that what she said was untrue. She must then take full and sole responsibility for it. However, the committee found that from 8 of August, Ms Khan was acting under the guidance of three senior Workers' Party leaders, Mr Pritam Singh, Ms Sylvia Lim and Mr Faisal Manap. And the advice given to her was to bury the truth and that she would not be judged. That's why she repeated the untruth again in Parliament on 4th of October. In considering the fines, the committee looked at precedent penalties for previous cases. They included a fine of $25,000 imposed on Singapore Democratic Party leader Dr. Chi Sun Juan in 1996 for fabricating data in Parliament. However, the case wasn't an abuse of parliamentary privilege as Dr. Chi was not a member of Parliament then. The committee says it found another precedent involving Mr. J.B. Jayaratnam to be more relevant. He was an MP when he made unsubstantiated allegations in Parliament about the wrongful arrest and detention of an individual. In 1987, he was issued a maximum fine under the law which was $1,000 at that time. In considering the penalties for Ms. Khan, the committee is recommending a fine of $25,000 for the first untruth that was said twice on 3rd of August. But for the untruth spoken on 4th of October, it's recommending a fine of $10,000. The committee states that repeating an untruth usually carries a higher penalty, but it's recommending a lesser amount, as it's taking into account the findings that as a first-time MP, she relied on wrong advice from her senior party leaders to take the information to the grave and carry on with the untruth. Other mitigating factors include that Ms Khan confessed to Lee leaders early and has already resigned from Parliament. The committee also recognises that her mental health was unfairly and publicly attacked, in particular by Mr Singh. The action recommended against the three Workers' Party leaders takes into consideration the different roles they played in the saga and conduct during the hearings. The report says it was clear from evidence that uh, the leader of the opposition, Pritam Singh, was the mastermind behind how the party managed the situation after Raisa Khan lied. Lili Ying has this report. A key orchestrator and the operating brain behind how the Workers' Party handled events after former MP Reza Khan lied in Parliament. 
The committee says leader of the opposition, Pritam Singh, is the main reason why no action was taken to come clean after 8 of August when it was revealed to party leadership or after Mr Khan repeated the lie on 4th October. The report says he lied under oath about his role, which could amount to perjury, a serious offence. That's why it's recommending that the matter be dealt with in court rather than in Parliament. This will allow prosecutors to look at all evidence afresh, even those not considered by the committee. Mr Singh will also get to defend and vindicate himself with legal counsel if he faces criminal charges. The report also recommends that party's vice chairman, Faisal Manak, be also referred to public prosecutors for possible contempt of parliament. He refused to answer the committee several times. The committee called his refusal flagrant and inexcusable and shows that he wanted to hide the truth, knowing that it would be deeply embarrassing and incriminating. This even when he had been honest enough to admit that the conduct of Workers' Party leaders had made no sense. The last of three leaders involved, Party Chairman Sylvia Lim, was found by the committee to be the most forthcoming. She volunteered to produce handwritten notes pointing out that Mr Singh had guided Ms Khan to continue with the lie. Given her background as a lawyer, the report says she would have appreciated that this evidence was extremely damaging to Mr Singh. Her willingness to cooperate should be taken into account, even though she too had lied under oath. Bear in mind that this is only about the three leaders' conduct during the hearings. Among other issues, sanctions on their roles in letting the lie continue are deferred until possible criminal investigations against Mr Singh are completed. Leader of the opposition, Pritam Singh, says a number of unknowns remain over the saga, even if Parliament accepts the committee's recommendations to refer him and MP Faisal Manap for criminal probe and possible prosecution. He says in a Facebook post that this includes whether the public prosecutor decides to prosecute. Another is the intervening time before the matter goes to trial, as well as the eventual verdict and any sentence meted out. Mr Singh says that if either of them is fined $2,000 or more, they could lose their parliamentary seats and step down as MPs. He says he will say more when the report is debated in Parliament, which he expects to take place next week. He also posted an image of a message from a party supporter. He thanks the public for their support and says that until there's some resolution to the matter, Mr Faisal and himself will continue their work as per normal. The same goes for the rest of the party and their outreach in previously contested zones. Now, the committee has recommended to defer action against other MPs until investigations or criminal proceedings, if any, against leader Pratham Singh are completed. One lawyer says this shows the committee thinks the behaviour of Mr Singh requires a more intense initial scrutiny. I think... Sending the matter to AGC for thorough investigations is fair because uh, the COP was faced in the face of the situation whereby it was he say, she say, right? And uh, given the gravity of the allegations made to and fro between the various uh, parties, um, you don't want to rush to any conclusion as to why they are seemingly going after Mr. Pritam Singh first. Um, my summation is that they think the behaviour of Mr. Singh requires the more initial intense scrutiny by the Attorney General's Chambers. Um, practically, all witnesses will be called up by the authorities for further investigation statements and so on and so forth. So there won't be much of a difference but you want to get to the serious uh, potential offender first, and then you deal with the, if you would, smaller cases later, if at all. Your question is, why don't you just find Mr. Pritam Singh now, for example? That's certainly open to the COP to do, um, but the allegations, unfortunately, are of a serious nature. Perjury in the courts usually results in a jail sentence. This is perjury to the COP. Um, therefore, I, do, I think quite clearly the COP doesn't want to rush to any sort of conclusion. Um, and they would defer to the more thorough investigations of the Attorney General's Chambers. 
Here's a recap of what happened in Parliament months back. The 3rd of August is the first time Ms Khan lies about police mishandling a sex assault case. Minister of State for Home Affairs Desmond Tan then asks for more information to investigate the matter. But Ms Khan refuses, saying she doesn't want to re-traumatise the victim. Two months later, Home Affairs and Law Minister Keishan Mugam makes a ministerial statement, pressing Ms Khan for more details. He says such allegations about the police are taken seriously to make sure that they do their jobs properly. Here are some highlights of that exchange. I ask the member through you, sir, to tell us at the very least, the police station that she went to with the victim, and if possible, the names of the police officer or officers who attended to the victim and the member. And if she cannot remember the names, then some details. Like I said, it did happen three years ago, and I haven't been successful getting in touch with the person that I accompanied. Um, and, you know, with regards to confidentiality, I would prefer it for it to remain that way. Um, but the questions on police station, date, etc.? With regards to confidentiality with the survivor, I would not like to reveal any of this information. Thank you. So we are talking about the police station. That's got nothing to do with the confidentiality of the minister. survivor. Sir, we have checked our records. We have no such case that um, fits in with the description that has been given by the member. Speaker and members will know that confidentiality doesn't extend to not telling us which police station. And uh, so I will leave it here for now, but that does not mean the matter rests. The police will investigate this very serious matter further. On the 1st of November, three months after the first instance of lying, Ms Khan finally comes clean, prompting a response from the Leader of the House. Here are some parts of that exchange. The member, as I understand it, and see if I've noted what she said correctly, she said that she had shared an anecdote, but in fact she had not gone down to the police station as she had previously described. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct, um, and hence why I'm making this apology today. All, I, all I'm asking is this, and I'm not sure that I had a response, but my question was simply this. It would have been possible to tell the story without the untruths and without referring to the survivors group. Would the member agree? Yes, so if I was un unclear, I apologize. Yes, I do feel like it, it would have been possible. Um, but in my haste um, and in my passion to, to advocate for, for survivors like myself, um, I, did, I did a mistake. These are matters which prima facie affect the privilege of Parliament, and I therefore reluctantly have to ask the matter, Mr. Speaker, to be referred to the Committee of Privileges.